I attempted a Hardcore Nuzlocke using only Pokemon that start with the letter H. Hardcore Nuzlocke's are self-imposed rule sets intended to make the game more challenging. The main rule is that once a Pokemon faints, it's essentially dead and you can't use it in battle anymore. I've made this challenge even more difficult by limiting myself to only Pokemon species that start with the letter H, like some of the ones shown on the screen now. I'll be trying this challenge in the Kanto map of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So, let's get into it. After you beat the Elite Four in the Johto region of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the game unlocks the Kanto region, normally played in a game like Fire Red or Leaf Green. There are eight badges to collect tier two, and a number of the same gym leaders, except their teams are significantly improved. But we'll deal with gym leaders in a little bit. The first thing that I need to do is get a Pokemon that starts with the letter H. I chose to try this challenge because there are no normal starting Pokemon beginning with the letter H. However, there is one Pokemon that can act as our starter because it gives me an interesting choice to make. Deep in the heart of Mount Mortar, and I mean really, really deep, there's a man who calls himself the Karate King, and upon his defeat, he'll give you a Tyrogue who, of course, evolves into Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, or Hitmontop. With these Pokemon species named after action movie stars, I decided to name my Tyrogue after my favorite action movie star. Vin Diesel, baby. This Pokemon team is like a family, and family is everything. All three evolutions start with the letter H and are fair game for this challenge. So, I need to decide which one I want. First off, this Tyrogue has a relaxed nature, which increases defense and lowers speed. Immediately, I think that would be best for Hitmontop and its base stats. Next, this Tyrogue has the Guts ability, which we can use to determine the ability of its evolution. A Guts Tyrogue will always evolve into these evolutions with these abilities. It's probably obvious, but the best ability here is Hitmontop's Intimidate. Because of these factors, I choose to evolve Tyrogue into Hitmontop. To do this, I need to make sure its attack and its defense are the exact same stat when it hits level 20. So, I go and get the EVs that I need, and when Hitmonvin hits level 20, his attack and his defense are both 22. We get Hitmontop, our first H Pokemon. Now we can start our journey to Kanto by heading to Olivine City, where Professor Oak gives us the National Pokedex. Then, we can board the SSAN. In order to get off the boat, you need to help this old man find his granddaughter. My adventure is almost over before it even really begins, as I almost white out on the one required fight on this boat. Luckily, I do manage to tough it out. The granddaughter is chilling with the captain, and she wants to play hide and seek. Glad we're all just cool letting this girl run around on a boat unsupervised. Once we complete that task, the boat has arrived in Vermilion City. We start here, but pretty much the entire region is open to us right now. That gives us a ton of flexibility, which is great because the level cap for gym leaders doesn't seem to follow any order, so I can take them on in the order that I want to. But first, I need to start building up my team of H Pokemon. A few Pokemon need to be obtained by headbutting trees, so I teach headbutt to Hitmonvin. My first encounter can be found just north of Vermilion City, on Route 6. By finding the right tree to headbutt, I can encounter a Hoot Hoot. I catch it, and name it Hawkeye, which will change later when I think of a better nickname. Hoot Hoot's evolution is Noctowl, which doesn't start with the letter H, so she'll stay as a weak option for this run. Through Saffron City and onto Route 8, I can catch a Wild Haunter, who I name Hamlet. A timid nature increases speed and lowers attack, which is a great nature for Haunter. Haunters also have the Levitate ability, which makes them immune to ground moves, in addition to its immunities to normal and fighting moves because of its ghost typing. My next encounter takes a little bit of extra planning. In Soul Silver, there's a radio function in the Poke Gear. This is mostly just there so you can listen to different music while you play the game. However, some channels do more than that. There are two channels called the Hoenn and Sinnoh Sound. By playing those stations on your radio, you'll find Pokemon exclusive to those regions. I'm targeting the Hoenn Sound station because I can find a Makahita, which evolves into Hariyama. However, the radio isn't working because a thief stole a part from the power plant. So I confront him in Cerulean City, defeat him and his Golbat, and reclaim the part from the Cerulean City gym. Then I return the part to the power plant to get the power back on, and the director of the radio tower is so grateful for my help that he updates my Pokegear to listen to radio stations. 
Now I can go to the rock tunnel, and by changing the date to Wednesday on my compu Nintendo DS, the radio will play the Hoenn Sound Station. This will allow me to find some Hoenn Pokemon, including Makahita. In Celadon City, there's a few trees that I can headbutt. There, I can run into Heracross, who I catch and name Heimlich. Unfortunately, Heimlich has the Swarm ability instead of Guts. Swarm can be useful in some circumstances, but increasing your attack with a status condition can be manipulated to do some good damage. East of Celadon, on Route 16, I can catch a Murkrow, who can evolve into Honchkrow. I switch up some of the names of my team, including naming Murkrow Hawkeye. Hawkeye has the pretty good Insomnia ability. I rename my Hoot Hoot to Hedwig, and my Hariyama to Holyfield. Holyfield does have the aforementioned Guts ability. Using a Dusk Stone, I evolve Murkrow into Honchkrow. And even though I have a full team of six now, there's still two more Pokemon I can catch. On Route 7, I can find Houndor, who I catch and name Hot Dog. Hot Dog can evolve into his final evolution, Houndoom. On Route 11, I find and catch a Drowsy, who I name Hibernator, and evolve into its final evolution, Hypno. At this point, I've walked through a significant portion of Kanto and caught most of my available encounters before fighting a single gym leader. I think it's about time to start preparing to get some badges. One thing I want to do is wake up this Snorlax because it's holding a Leftovers, one of the best items in the game that heals you a little bit every turn. I teach Thief to Hot Dog so it can steal the Leftovers from Snorlax. Unfortunately, Snorlax uses Block, so now I can't escape. Now I have to try to kill this level 50 Snorlax, but before I can even try, it uses Giga Impact. This was probably not a good idea. This Leftovers better be the single most helpful item I have ever used. Finally, it's time to kick off the Gym Leader Gauntlet, starting with the Gym Leader with the lowest level Ace. That would be Janine and her Poison-type Pokémon. Janine starts with Crobat, and I start with Hibernator, who has the choice specs to increase her special attack. I need to give Hibernator the choice specs to hit some ranges, so I have no berry to stop a Confusion from Confuse Ray. Unfortunately, I do hit myself in Confusion on the first turn. Crobat goes for Screech, which harshly lowers my defense, and this time I am able to hit through Confusion and knock out Crobat with one Psychic. Next out is Ariados, and since Hibernator is still confused, I switch into Heimlich, and Ariados lowers my speed. I'm still faster though, and Aerial Ace will be a 2 hit KO, though at minus 2 speed I'll be slower. I'm still safe to a crit though, so I can stay in and knock out Ariados with one more Aerial Ace. Third out is Venomoth. Heimlich is dead to crit so I switch into Hawkeye, and Venomoth increases its evasiveness. Venomoth does it again, and I of course miss my wing attack. I learn that it was risky to stay in on a sludge bomb, and then miss a second wing attack. I want to get back to Hypno, so I pivot through Hamlet, who can take a Signal Beam much better than Hypno would. Then I switch to Hypno, and Venomoth doesn't use Signal Beam, so the pivot was successful. I'm slower and therefore risking a crit to stay in, but luckily no crit, unfortunately Psychic misses. So this Venomoth is kind of wrecking me right now. I didn't want to sack something this early, but it has come to this. Hedwig actually hangs on after two attacks, but unfortunately misses a Hypnosis. Sorry Hedwig. This gives me a free switch to Heimlich, who is faster and knows a move that can't miss, and luckily gets a crit to knock out Venomoth. Next out is Weezing, and since it's not the last Pokemon, I'm hoping it will explode, so I switch to my Ghost type, and even though it doesn't explode, Sludge Bomb is minimal damage. From there, Shadow Ball will be a 2 hit KO, and the only thing that Weezing can do to me is Sludge Bomb. One more Shadow Ball takes Weezing out. Finally, it's the second Ariados and I risk a crit to stay in, although I do get a crit myself. Hamlet definitely was the king of this fight. Now that I've lost a Pokemon I can sacrifice, I find another one in Hopip. I catch her and name her Hibiscus. Hibiscus won't be able to evolve into Skiploom or Jumpluff, so its use will be pretty limited. The gym leader with the next lowest level cap is Lieutenant Surge and his electric Pokemon. Surge starts off with Raichu, and I send out Hamlet. I start with a Shadow Ball that will be a two-hit KO. And since I'm faster, Raichu goes for Thunder Wave to paralyze me. I anticipated this, so Hamlet shakes off the paralysis with a Cherry Berry. Now I can safely knock out Raichu with a second Shadow Ball. Next out is Electrode, and I switch into Holyfield. Electrode goes for a double team to raise its evasiveness. Holyfield is holding the Soft Sand, which increases the power of Ground-type moves. I also taught him the move Dig, which should be able to knock out Electrode if it connects. Thankfully, it does, despite Electrode being plus 3 evasiveness. 
This physical contact procs static, which usually would be bad, but remember that Holyfield has the guts ability. Next out is Electabuzz, and I switch into Heimlich, who's completely safe to all of Electabuzz's moves. Electabuzz sets up a light screen, which is fine since I'll be using physical moves, including close combat, which knocks it out in one hit. Surge sends out Magneton, and even though my special defense was lowered from close combat, I'm not at risk, since I'm faster and can one-hit KO Magneton with a second close combat. Last, we get Surge's second Electrode, and I switch back to the Guts-boosted Holyfield. Electrode raises its evasiveness a few times as I go for Dig. With the Guts boost and a Soft Sand, I should have no problem knocking out Electrode. I just need to hit my attack. At plus 3 evasiveness, Electrode can't escape the Dig from Holyfield. So despite having no ground Pokemon, we handily defeat Lieutenant Surge and get the second Gym Badge. Next in the level cap order is Brock and Misty, who both have their highest level Pokemon at level 54. Usually for Gym Fights, I give my Pokemon a lot of experience, so when they knock out the first Pokemon, they'll gain a level for the rest of the fight. Since I want to stay under the level 54 level cap for both of these fights, I won't be doing that. I decide to take on Misty first, since she has a smaller team. Before the fight, I let Holyfield get poisoned so he could go into the Misty fight with Guts activated. I also taught Holyfield Facade, a move that's boosted when you have a status condition. Guts and Facade are a great combination. Now we can take on Misty and her water Pokemon. Misty starts with Golduck, and I send out Hibernator. Hypno is slower than Golduck and doesn't do a ton of damage, but she can take damage from Golduck really well. Water Pulse does almost nothing to me, and I'm holding a Person Berry in case I'm confused. Psychic is unlikely to be a 2-hit KO, so I go for Headbutt. Not only will Psychic definitely be a 2-hit KO now, but I'm safe from this happening. If Golduck had disabled Psychic instead, I would be in a lot of trouble. But I'm not, so one more Psychic should do the trick. I take one more Water Pulse and still don't get confused, and knock out Golduck with Psychic. Next out is Misty's ace, Starmie. Hibernator is still safe here, so I stay in a turn and try to put Starmie to sleep, which actually works. Now I'll switch into Holyfield to take out a sleeping Starmie, and wow, you don't see that too often. Usually the AI switches when you've used a super effective move against it, but I guess it can also switch when you put a status condition on it. Holyfield isn't well equipped to take on Quagsire, but you know who actually is? Hibiscus, the Hoppip. Quagsire is four times weak to grass moves, and I don't have a lot of grass options. With Quagsire sharply raising its special defense, I decide to do some chip damage with Leech Seed, as Quagsire goes for a Rain Dance. With the damage from Leech Seed, it'll take two Giga Drains to knock out Quagsire, and even in the rain, a Water Pulse crit can't even kill me. Hibiscus knocks out Quagsire with one more Giga Drain, proving itself to be more than just a sacrificial plant. Next out is Lapras, who absolutely sees a kill here with Ice Beam. So I switch into Vin, who not only lowers Lapras' attack, but completely tanks an Ice Beam. Vin is just a pivot so that I can go into Heimlich, who can't take an Ice Beam. Lapras goes for a Sing, and fortunately, I had planned for that also. Heimlich doesn't choke here, outspeeding Lapras and knocking it out with one close combat. Last, Misty sends out Starmie, who's no longer asleep. Starmie does have the Natural Cure ability, which removes status conditions upon switching out. Makes sense why Misty would do that. Heimlich is actually safe to stay in here, but after a Confuse Ray and I hit myself in Confusion, it's time to switch out. The plan was originally for Guts Boosted Holyfield to knock out Starmie. Since Holyfield is slower, I have to risk a crit here. I start with Fake Out to do some chip damage, and after poison damage, I'm still safe to regular attacks and dead to crits. But thankfully, Ice Beam doesn't crit, and with the boost from Guts and Facade, Holyfield knocks out his opponent. Misty can't drown us, and we get the third badge. To get to the gym in Pewter City, I need to go through Diglett Cave, and I stop by Viridian City on the way. But we're here to take on Brock and his rock Pokemon. Brock sends out Graveler, and I send out Hibiscus. Despite being a first stage Pokemon, Hibiscus can outspeed Graveler, and because of its times 4 weakness to grass, Hibiscus can knock it out in one hit. Next out is Amistar, and Hibiscus can do the exact same thing here. Kabutops is next, and although Hibiscus can one hit KO here, Kabutops is faster. So I switch into Vin, who lowers Kabutops' attack with Intimidate, and takes a weakened Rock Slide completely fine. Vin also has the leftovers to keep him healthy. I go for a fake out, but Kabutops has a priority move too, so we just trade minor amounts of damage. 
Then, I take another Aqua Jet and launch a close combat at the rock-type Kabutops, which knocks him out. Rhyhorn is next, so I go back to Hibiscus. Rhyhorn goes for Scary Face, which lowers my speed to minus two. However, Rhyhorn is so slow that Hopip is still faster and knocks him out in one hit. Last is Onyx, who Hibiscus would normally be able to outspeed. However, because of the speed drop, I'm slower. So I switch back to Vin, who intimidates Onyx, who just uses Sandstorm, fakes Onyx out because why not, avoids a screech from Onyx that wouldn't do anything, and knocks it out with one close combat. I gotta say, my Hopip is pulling way more weight than I expected. This thing has less base stats than Pidgey, and is still completely killing it. Honestly, it just goes to show how vital grass Pokemon are for this stretch of the game. Working my way through the Gym Leader Gauntlet gets me to Sabrina and her Psychic-type Pokemon. Luckily, I have a Dark-type Pokemon on my team. Sabrina starts with Espeon, and I send out Hawkeye. Hawkeye is slower than all of Sabrina's Pokemon, but because they can't use Psychic moves, they have extremely limited options. One of the only things Espeon can do is go for Shadow Ball, which doesn't do much damage, but does proc a special defense drop. With the black classes, Hawkeye can knock out Espeon with one Night Slash. Sabrina sends out Alakazam next. The physical attack Night Slash would kill Alakazam here, but it has a chance to put up Reflect. So, like many other Dark-type superheroes, Hawkeye has a nasty plot. After a completely useless skill swap, Hawkeye raises his special attack to plus two. Alakazam still doesn't put Reflect up, opting to go for some damage with Energy Ball, and Hawkeye uses the special attack Dark Pulse to one-hit KO Alakazam. Sabrina only has three Pokemon, so last is Mr. Mime. One of the only things Mr. Mime can do is put up a light screen, so in anticipation of that, I go for the physical move Night Slash, which knocks her out in one hit. Just like in the fight for the Soul Stone, Hawkeye comes out on top. The next gym leader is Erika and her grass Pokemon. Erika starts with Jumpluff, and I send out Heimlich. Heimlich can outspeed Jumpluff and hits a Megahorn that will be a one-hit KO. Megahorn has a 15% chance of missing, so it's a little inconsistent, although it works out well to start. Victory Bell is out next, and Heimlich hits another Megahorn, although it barely misses the range to kill. Victory Bell puts Sun up, so because of its chlorophyll ability, it's now faster than me. Erika heals up, and I use Aerial Ace to ensure I'll get a two-hit KO. Victory Bell uses Leaf Storm, which I am completely safe to, and I knock it out with a second Aerial Ace. Next out is Blossom, and even with Chlorophyll buffing its speed, I'm faster and can knock it out with one Megahorn. Finally, Erika sends out Tangela, who also has Chlorophyll and is faster than me. Tangela goes for a Sleep Powder, but I actually gave Heimlich a Chesto Berry, and it retaliates with a Megahorn that knocks out Tangela. That's the second gym fight in a row where I only needed one Pokemon. All right, we just had a bunch of battles in a row, so let's take a quick break from that. First, let's review the team. I'm not able to get too many diverse Pokemon, as I have three fighting types and don't have any of the common types like water, fire, or electric. Luckily, I am able to get a lot of final evolutions, and even a middle evolution like Haunter is still pretty valuable. The team also has some decent abilities, like Hitmontop's Intimidate and Hariyama's Guts. Overall, it's not the best team I've ever had, but it's certainly not the worst. The next thing that I wanted to do is encourage everyone watching the video to subscribe to my channel. If you're enjoying these videos, make sure you're subscribed. That way you can get notified when I release future videos. Seeing a bigger number gives me a bigger smile. Third, I wanted to show that I've been almost everywhere in Kanto. And because of the flexibility of the game, I've been able to do it in whatever order I wanted to. But now, I need to head down to Cinnabar Island to take on the 7th Gym Leader. I need to teach somebody Surf, but nobody is a water type. And yet, Hariyama can learn Surf. Is he just like a big flotation device? I pass through Pallet Town, which is completely pointless in this game, and take a quick Surf to reach Cinnabar Island. A bit to the east are the Seafoam Islands, which is the location of the 7th Gym and the location of my final encounter, Horsey. I name Horsey Hydro, and he'll never become a Seedra or a Kingdra because they don't start with the letter H. The timing for a water Pokemon is perfect, as next we have to take on Blaine and his fire Pokemon. Blaine leads Magcargo, and I send out Hydro. Magcargo is slow and four times weak to water, so Hydro can outspeed 
and knock out Mag Cargo with one Surf. Next out is Magmar, and unfortunately, Hydro's usefulness is capped. He's too slow and frail to do much else. So, just after joining the team, Hydro goes down in flames. This gives me a safe switch in to the Guts boosted Holyfield. After a fake out that does good damage, Magmar sets up the Sun, and then I can safely knock it out with Dig. Last is Rapidash. Holyfield stays in on a Sun boosted Overheat, and thankfully it doesn't crit as Holyfield just hangs on. Then, Holyfield retaliates with a close combat, and with the boost from Guts, is able to knock out Rapidash. Thanks to a beautiful sacrifice from Hydro, we have the seventh badge. Last, we need to take on the eighth gym leader, Blue, and his diverse team of Pokemon. Blue sends out Exeggutor, and I send out Hawkeye. I definitely want to avoid a Trick Room, so I start with a Taunt on Exeggutor, which was a good idea. Now because of my immunity to Psychic moves, all Exeggutor can do is Leaf Storm. So I start setting up my special attack with Nasty Plots. Exeggutor even misses Leaf Storm, so I can go for another Nasty Plot. This time Leaf Storm connects, and actually does a surprising amount of damage to me. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for a second Nasty Plot. Regardless, I'm still safe, so I can knock Exeggutor out with one Dark Pulse. Next out is Rhydon. Because of my plus four special attack, Hawkeye can knock out Rhydon with one Dark Pulse. Blue sends out Gyarados next, and luckily I'm a special attacker, and can knock Gyarados out with one Dark Pulse. Fourth is Machamp, and I taught Psychic to Hawkeye, solely so it had an option to take out Machamp in one hit. Next out is Arcanine, who Hawkeye can also outspeed and kill. However, Arcanine knows extreme speed, which puts Hawkeye at risk. So in an attempt to be extra safe, I try to sack Hibiscus. But Arcanine goes for Roar, which drags Heimlich out. I definitely don't want Heimlich out. So I switch back to Hibiscus again, who goes down to a Flare Blitz. Hibiscus ended up being extremely valuable to the team. Let's pour one out for our homie. I send out Holyfield, who can only die to a high roll crit. And high roll crits, well, they do happen sometimes. Uh... I send out Hamlet, who is faster than Arcanine, and because of the recoil damage from Flare Blitz, Hamlet can knock out Arcanine with one Shadow Ball. Last is Blue's Pidgeot, so I switch into Vin to get an Intimidate off, and Vin takes an Air Slash, and now is certainly dead to crit. I have no choice but to risk it and play into that risk by going for Endeavor, which brings Pidgeot's HP down to mine. With Pidgeot's Citrus Berry, I'm hoping he won't be in healing range. I have to switch into Heimlich, and Blue doesn't heal, opting for an Air Slash that almost kills Heimlich. How did this battle happen? Heimlich is faster and close combat can knock out Pidgeot. Man, this was an absolutely wild one. For the second part of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, there's no requirement to beat the Elite Four. The only thing you have to do is beat Red. So, I'm going to first take on Red, since that's the only requirement. I did save a state though, so I can take on the Elite Four after as a bonus. Since Hariyama died to a high roll crit in the blue fight, I don't have a full team available for this fight. That puts me at a pretty big disadvantage. Red is a really tough fight. So, let's see if I can still sneak out a win. Red starts with his unevolved Pikachu, who's also his highest level Pokemon, and I send out Heimlich. There's also constant hail in this fight. Heimlich can outspeed Pikachu, and close combat does enough damage to knock out Pikachu in one hit. The crit is just a spicy extra bonus that affected nothing. Next out is Charizard, who Heimlich does not match up well against. I need to get into Hitmontop, but with the Flare Blitz likely coming, I don't want to switch right there. I shouldn't really need Hawkeye for this fight, so I switch him in. One Flare Blitz doesn't knock Hawkeye out, but he's slower than Charizard, so a second one definitely does. It does a good bit of recoil damage to Charizard though. Then I switch in Vin, who intimidates Charizard and gets some extra damage with Fake Out. I'm safe to a Blast Burn, but it misses anyway, and Vin knocks out Charizard with close combat. Red sends out Lapras next. Vin should be faster, but gets a Quick Claw proc anyway, and a close combat is enough to take out Lapras. Fourth is Snorlax, and Vin is definitely faster, and can also knock out Snorlax with one close combat. Fifth is Venusaur, and this is where the close combating ends. I switch in Hibernator to take a Sludge Bomb, but she unfortunately gets poisoned. Hibernator is safe to take another Sludge Bomb, 
and retaliates with a super effective Psychic, which knocks out Venusaur in one hit. The last Pokemon on Red's team is Blastoise, so I let Blastoise take out Hibernator to get a safe switch in to Heimlich. Heimlich is faster, but can't quite one-hit KO with close combat. Even after a special defense drop, Heimlich is safe to a Blizzard from Blastoise, but she's not safe from getting frozen. Red heals Blastoise up, and unfortunately, I can't break out of the freeze. On the next turn, Heimlich goes down to a Blizzard. Then, I switch in Vin, who does some damage with Fake Out, before tanking a blizzard from Blastoise and retaliating with a close combat that barely keeps Blastoise alive. However, Hail is my savior, knocking out Blastoise and allowing me to defeat Red. Well, I did it. But let's be honest, it's not a real challenge unless you beat an Elite Four. So let's do it. Let's complete the Johto Elite Four rematches. I'm using the team from after the eighth badge which means Mons that didn't make it through that fight won't be included, such as Holyfield the Hariyama, but anyone who didn't make it through the red fight still gets to be here, since the Elite Four would come naturally after the 8th badge. It's going to be an uphill battle anyway, since I only have 5 Pokemon to take on 5 fights. The first of these fights is against Will, and his Psychic Pokemon. Will starts by sending out Bronzong, and I send out Hawkeye, who can't be hit by Psychic-type moves. Bronzong is the perfect setup Pokemon, allowing me to start raising my special attack with Nasty Plot. Since I'm raising my special attack, Reflect doesn't matter. I get to plus 4 and Bronzong uses Gravity, so now I can be hit by Ground-type moves. But nobody has any, so... okay? I'm now at plus 6 special attack, and all Bronzong can do is go for a weak payback, which does even less because I'm holding the leftovers. At plus 6 special attack, I easily take out Bronzong with one Dark Pulse. At plus 6 special attack, I'm also able to knock out Jinx with one Dark Pulse, knock out Grumpig with one Dark Pulse, knock out Gardevoir with a Dark Pulse, knock out Slowbro with a Dark Pulse, and because I gave speed EVs to Hawkeye, outspeed and knock out Zatu with, you guessed it, a Dark Pulse. That is a clean, clean sweep of Will. The second battle of the Elite Four is against Koga and his Poison type Pokemon. Koga leads with Skun Tank, and I send out Hamlet. Because of his immunity to both ground and normal type moves, and an immunity to Toxic, Skun Tank can only hurt Hamlet by using Sucker Punch, which will fail unless I attack Skun Tank. So, I can stall Skun Tank by using the status move Curse, which will slowly kill him. Then, I'll stall Skun Tank out with Confuse Rays, while he slowly dies to the Curse. After a few turns, the Curse knocks out Skun Tank. Next out is Venomoth. So I switch into Hawkeye, who's immune to psychic moves. I go for a nasty plot, as Venomoth raises its evasiveness. This causes me to miss my psychic, and Venomoth goes for a silver wind that actually gets the Omni Boost. I decide to stay in, but now Venomoth is faster, and wow, I am lucky to be alive. At least Psychic connects this time, and I'm able to knock out Venomoth. Next out is Swalot, and since I'm still at plus two special attack, Psychic is able to Oko him. I can do the exact same thing to Koga's next Pokemon, Toxicroak. This strategy won't work for Crobat though, so I switch in to Vin as a pivot to intimidate Crobat and take a Cross Poison. Then I switch to Hamlet, who gets stuck in battle, which is fine with me. A Psychic from Hamlet will be a 2 hit KO against Crobat, so I take some damage from Fly and knock out Crobat with a second Psychic. Last we have Muck, who can't do anything except confuse me, and since I'm faster, I start with the Psychic as Muck just decides to go for Minimize. One more Psychic, and we've defeated Koga. Third, we take on Bruno and his fighting Pokemon. Bruno starts with Hitmontop, and I send out Hamlet, who is immune to both fighting and normal attacks, both of which are common in this fight. Who needs the same type attack bonus when you have the choice specs? Knocking Hitmontop out in one hit. Next out is Hariyama, and Hamlet can make the same choice and use Psychic to knock out Hariyama. Next is Machamp, who goes down the exact same way as its two teammates. The sweep ends at Lucario though, and literally every single one of my team members is at risk to a crit here. Since the risk is unavoidable, I decide to take it with Heimlich, and luckily Iron Tail does not crit, and on the next turn, I can outspeed Lucario and knock him out with a super effective close combat. Fifth is Hitmonlee, and expecting a blaze kick, I switch to Hawkeye, who is always safe. Then, expecting a fighting move, 
I switch to Hamlet. It's always a little bit risky for a pivot like this, but this time it works to perfection. From here, Hamlet can knock out Hitmonlee with one psychic. Finally, Bruno sends out Hitmonchan, who does know a priority move in Bullet Punch, but Hamlet is always safe. Hamlet can then use Psychic to Oko Hitmonchan and give us the third victory of the Elite Four members. Fourth, we take on Karen and her Dark-type Pokemon. Karen starts with Weevil, and I send out Heimlich. Heracross is fast, but not fast enough to outspeed Weevil. Thankfully, Heimlich can totally take an Ice Punch from Weevil, but can he take being frozen? Yes, yes he can. Heimlich uses Brick Break, which is four times effective against Weevil, and knocks it out in one hit. Next out is Honchkrow, and Heimlich is also able to take her out with one close combat. Karen sends out Houndoom next, reminding me of a Pokemon I once caught, but really never got to use. Heimlich doesn't let the memory of her brother get to her, and knocks out Houndoom with a single close combat. Fourth is Absol, and Heimlich is on a total rampage. Who needs setup moves when you're so strong that you can knock out four straight Pokemon? The streak ends here though, as Spiritomb can't be hit by fighting type moves. Karen's Spiritomb is kind of a weird Pokemon, since it has no moves that deal damage without a caveat. I switch into Hamlet, and Spiritomb goes for a Confuse Ray. I want to kill Spiritomb indirectly so I don't take damage from Sucker Punch. So, I hit through Confusion and land a Curse on Spiritomb, and it does the exact same thing to me. I do have leftovers though, which puts me at a slight advantage. To stall out curse turns, I switch into Heimlich and back to Hamlet to stall even more, as Spiritomb sacrifices itself to put another curse on Hamlet, which, thanks to leftovers, it's able to survive. Finally, Karen sends out Umbreon. So I switch into Vin, who intimidates Umbreon, and tanks an absolutely pathetic payback. First, I use Fake Out. I can knock out Umbreon with a close combat, but because it raises its defense with Curse, it's not strong enough. However, Umbreon's speed also drops from using Curse, so now Vin is faster and can knock out Umbreon with a second close combat. My team of five has defeated 24 Pokemon without a single death, and now it's time to take on the champion. My previous level cap was for Karen, but using rare candies, I get my team up to the champion's level cap. The champion is Lance, who uses Dragon-type Pokemon. Lance sends out Salamence, and I send out Hamlet. Salamence lowers Hamlet's attack, but I won't be using physical attacks. Hamlet knows Icy Wind, a move that's four times effective against Salamence. Because of this massive type advantage, Salamence goes down to just one Icy Wind. Lance sends out Dragonite next, who has the exact same situation as Salamence. Lance, buddy, what did you expect to happen here? Third is Charizard, who definitely won't die to an Icy Wind. So I switch in Vin, who can take a Flamethrower completely fine. After a Fake Out just for funsies, I stay in and dodge a crit from Air Slash to miss Rock Slide. It's alright Vin, you've been a great team member. Go enjoy a Corona for me. I have to improvise a bit here, so I switch into Hibernator, who can take a Flamethrower thanks to her high special defense, and spend a turn setting up a Nasty Plot. I'm actually still safe to even a crit Flamethrower, and then with her plus two special attack, Hibernator lands a Psychic to knock out Charizard. For Garchomp, I'm going to sack Hibernator here to get back to Hamlet with Icy Wind, but Hibernator gets an insanely clutch Quick Claw proc, and lands a Psychic against Garchomp. That freaking crits! That was absolutely wild RNG, so I'm glad it was in my favor. Next is Gyarados, and Hibernator can't get lucky again, getting taken out by Gyarados' Waterfall. This gives me a safe switch to Heimlich, where Megahorn might be a two-hit KO, or it could be a crit that leaves Gyarados on one HP. Since I'm faster, Gyarados goes for a Thunder Wave, but Heimlich is able to shake it off. Lance heals up, and I don't hit a good range with Megahorn. On my second hit, it doesn't work again, and Gyarados paralyzes me for real this time. Lance heals Gyarados up a second time, and I try a different strategy with Brick Break. Now that I'm slower and no Gyarados will attack me, I take a Waterfall from Gyarados and then use Counter, doubling the damage Gyarados did to me in order to knock it out. Lance's last Pokemon is Altaria, so I switch into Hamlet as Altaria raises its evasiveness. Hamlet hits his Icy Wind, which is four times effective against Altaria, and with only two deaths in the Elite Four, we become the new champion. Well, I hope you enjoyed this challenge run. 
If you did, it would help me out a lot if you liked the video or left me a comment. Who do you think was the MVP of the run? Let me know down below. Also, it would be awesome if you subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. This has been a quick Nuzlocke of Pokemon Soul Silver using only H Pokemon. Thank you so much for watching.